Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and we're back again with another Spirit Island video. Today, we're going to talk about how to do a play-by-post game. Often called PPP for short, a play-by-post game is a remote, non-synchronous way to play Spirit Island. There will be a game host who has a digital copy of the game and executes everyone's actions on their behalf. The host will put up pictures of the game state at the beginning of each phase, and players will declare their turns in text form. PVPs are naturally a slower format, since players may exist in different countries and real-life obligations may prevent someone from being readily available to submit their turn. PVPs are my favorite way to play recently, and this guide is to help you also become accustomed to the format. If you want to play in a PVP, the first thing you will have to do is to get the PVP tag on the Discord and join a game. So at the top of the channel's list, if you come here to role selection, you will see this message here, and you're gonna want to click on the fractured days time icon, and that will give you the PVP role. Then you will come to the PVP lobby channel under the play by post category, and it'll bring you to this channel here. Here is where new games will be announced, and by having the PVP role, you'll be notified each time that happens. Before we get too deep into the weeds though, Let's start by looking at a short text guide written by Dan Poor. Nothing that I say in this video will contradict what he has written. I only wish to supplement it visually and cover some more niche situations that can cause confusion. So go to pinned messages and there's only one pinned message so we can jump right up to here. After taking a second to read this, we can see that there is another link for a PVP guide for players. And so if we select this, this will give us another short text guide, which I would recommend pausing and reading right now. This video we're currently on is just for players. So for our purposes, we have to wait until someone announces that they're starting a game and then we can join it. If you aspire to host your own game, stay tuned for the next guide and we'll go over that. So here is an announcement that uh, went out to start a PVP. As was stated in that earlier Danpour guide, you will respond with the any player icon if you are not in any PVP and respond with the reclaim icon if you are. Many hosts will prioritize giving spots to those not in any PVP, but they can select their players by any means that they choose. After some time, the host will announce whoever was selected for the game. And if that's you, then you're off to the races. Every game gets two channels, one for uploading finalized turns and the other for discussion. This game is a six player Scotland six game and that was assigned to channel 14. So if you look at the channel name, you can see there is 14 up and 14 DC. That stands for 14 upload and 14 discussion. Whenever you get into a PVP, the first thing that I recommend that you do is if you right click on the channel, you'll get all these different options and you're going to want to click on favorite. Since I've already favorited this channel, it tells me to unfavor it, but you're going to want to favorite any games that you are in. That way they don't get buried and they're regularly accessible. It is quite possible that there might not be any uh, new messages since the last time you saw it, but you still need to interact with the channel because you're going to come back to it much more regularly than you would any other channel on this Discord. So the first thing that must happen when you get into the game is choosing what spirit you're going to play. The host will set parameters for the game, most commonly choosing the adversary that you will play against and the scenario, if any. Sometimes though, the host will have a much more specific vision in mind such as a predetermined team of spirits. In those situations, you must make your decisions within the guidelines set by the host. Once all players have made their choices, the game will begin. So as you can see in this channel here, there was a lot of conversation and discussion about what spirits everyone wanted to play, but pretty quickly we settled in on these spirits here. At the top of both channels in the description will be the Bitcrafter link which you can see right here. That's the platform with which we will interact with your spirit. Until players have chosen their spirits and the host uploads the game, the site will be completely empty. But once the game does start, you will do all of your spirit actions in this portal. So let's check it out. When the game starts, you can go into the Bitcrafter 
and it will look a little something like this. Just so you know, this BitCrafter setup is not actually tied to any real game, so I'll be messing around for the demonstration purposes, but don't do this in a real game. So at the top, we have a screenshot of the current island board. This is a second screenshot for the invader board. So between these two screenshots, we should have all of the necessary universal information in order to make our decisions. Below that, we have tabs for all of the different spirits in the game. This game, let's say we're playing as Finder. So we want to make sure that we have the Finder tab open before we start clicking around. This portal is incredibly helpful, but it's also quite bare bones. There's nothing stopping you from cheating or messing around with other player stuff, so you must play with integrity. Failure to do so could get you kicked out of the game at the host's discretion. So since we're playing as Finder, we want to open that tab first. All spirits have the same basic setup. First, we have our spirit board with all of our presents on it. If we click on any of these presents, it will be removed. But let's say that we changed our mind on how we want to grow and we want to remove a different presence. Simply click on that empty spot and it will return. And then you can choose something else. Below the spirit panel is the ready up button. Until we've made all of our spirit phase decisions, we do not want to click this button, so we'll come back to that later in a minute. Below that, we have two element trackers. This top one is the elements that you currently have, and the bottom one is to track any permanent free elements that you have, such as from lesser spirits imperiled. To gain an element on either track, you will simply click on the element or the big number next to it, and it will increase. If you made a misclick, uh, or you decide to tick it down for any reason, click on the small little plus one button in the parenthetical, and it will be removed. Cards such as Elemental Boon or Nature's Connection could give you free elements, and this is how you would track them. So maybe you got these and then you change your mind, you could unselect this and select something else instead. Below that, we have energy controls. So we have uh, zero energy in the pool right now, we have these buttons here, which let you just manually increase or decrease the amount of energy that you have. And then this is a scripted gain energy button and a scripted pay cost button. So as I'm gonna start adding and removing some of these presents, pay attention to the element tracks and the parentheses here on gain energy. And you can see that it's all tied together. So right now we have the free sun and the free moon, and it's counted here, and we have one energy which is shown here. We can pick up that free air, plus two energy will put us up to three, another plus one puts us up to four, and so on from there. Take note, we have a free any element, and since that is not predetermined, we get nothing. Once we unlock this free element, every single turn we must pick one and select it. Below the energy track, we have the ability to gain a minor or major power. One of the best things about the BitCrafter is that it completely manages power gains. The majority of the time you will gain powers in the normal draw four, pick one style. So let's say we choose to gain a minor power for our growth option. We can click on gain minor four cards and the options will show up right here. So we can look at this, we can take our time and let's say we ultimately decide to go with uh, lure of the unknown. Simply select choose and Lure of the Unknown gets added to our hand, and the other cards will get added to the discard pile. So four cards is the most common way to go, but as you can see, there is the option for six cards for Boon of Reimagining, and then one card for any spirits that take instead of gain, such as Mentor Memory. In the same way, we have the options for Gain and Major, where you could do your normal gain four cards, you could gain two cards for unlock, and then gain one card if you were to take instead of gain. So once again, the uh, reason why you gain a card, you just make a choice, it'll give you the options, and then you can select your card. So as I just alluded to, this is your hand, okay? Everything here is in your hand, and every single card has three basic choices. You can play them, discard them, or forget them. If you choose to play a card, you simply click on it and it will be highlighted in green. 
your green cards are the ones that are in play. So now the play switches to an unplay option. Pay attention here to the pay cost as we start to choose our cards. Okay, these three cards collectively cost six energy. So we can't afford that, right? We could gain our five energy for the turn and perhaps we can't afford this indomitable. So we unselect it, play, I don't know, maybe this instead, pay cost of two. And you can see it jumped down from five down to three. Additionally, after we put a card into play, it automatically updates on our element tracker. So with these combinations of cards, we have these combinations of elements. And if we scroll up, we now have these thresholds met. Similarly, if we have the thresholds for a major met right now, we do not have the three earth necessary. So this shows up as a red X. But let's say by some means we were to pick up two more earth elements. This now switches to a check. Of course, Indomitable Claim is not in play right now, so this doesn't really matter, but that's a nice quality of life feature in case it were in play by some means. If at any time you need to discard or forget a card, those options are available as well. So when we gain this Indomitable Claim, we're required to forget a card. So let's just say we forgot this Traveler's Boon. We simply click on forget. Okay, a little one last second check. We hit okay, and boom, it's gone. It's not in our discard pile. Our discard pile is currently empty. You know, maybe we have to discard this for some event. Okay, there we go. We can reclaim the one card. We can forget it. Uh, but that Traveler's Boon is gone. So that's really what you need to know to execute your turn. You know, getting your free elements, gaining your energy, paying your costs, choosing your presence, and then everything here with the actual execution of the powers is simply written out in plain text in the upload channel. So once we've made all of our decisions for all the cards we want to put into play, we've gained our energy, we paid our energy, we simply click this button and that sends a script out to the Discord and it says, hey, I'm all set and ready to go. And it just lets all the other players know and the host know that you, know, you are ready to proceed forwards. When time passes happens, you're simply going to click on this button again. Everything that is in play will go to your discard pile. Additionally, the option to gain energy and pay costs is now available again. Everything is down here. So let's say for some reason you had the ability to get a card that you forgot back, or if you decided to, you know what, I actually didn't want to gain this lure, I want to gain a different card. If we scroll down a little bit farther, we have show power discard pile. We click on here, here is every single card that was forgotten or passed up on when you could have gained it over the course of the whole game. So perhaps instead of Lur, I wanted this Here There Be Monsters. We can claim this card. It goes right to our hand and we can forget Lur of the Unknown. And that's really it. The majority of the spirits have setups this simple. You know, just gain energy, elements if you need it, click on the gain energy, pay costs and take it away from there. While the majority of spirits are quite easy to use in the Big Crafter, there are a few that have a few tricks that are important to know. But the first one I want to talk about is any variation of Ocean's Hungry Grasp. Since Ocean gains a lot of energy by alternative means, you need to have an explicit conversation with the game host to make sure that you guys agree on who is going to give the energy to Ocean for all those drowned invaders. In the games that I've played, it's really always been the game host who takes care of it, but you do want to have that conversation just to make sure that you guys all agree. So next we have Sunshine River, a spirit I bet you forgot existed. A uh, couple notes with this guy. One, he starts with one energy, but in the Bit Crafter, it starts at zero. There are a couple other spirits such as Hearth Vigil and Spreading Hostility Keeper that also have this happen to them. So you want to make sure that you start with the correct amount of energy. Also, you want to make sure that you have the correct starting hand. I was testing some other spirits from Nature Incarnate that mess things around and they all seem to work appropriately, but Sunshine starts with Boon of Vigor when they should not. Additionally, for any spirit that has an aspect, you will see that the aspect comes set up right on it as if it was printed on. So that is quite nice and helpful. Next, going over to Earthquakes. Earthquake 
has the standard three zones that cards can exist in, as well as the additional impending zone. So if we come down on their board, he has an extra zone that says impending. And every single card also has a fourth option to impend. Now the tricky thing when something is impending is that there is no energy tracker on it. So what are we going to do? The way that I've seen players handle this is actually by changing your player's name. So normally the host might put everyone's name at the end of their spirit. So you could do something like this and then change. And we refresh the page and we can see, hey, look at that. Earthquakes is being played by Ryan. Well, I've seen Earthquake players use that spot as the way that they can keep track of their energy. So you can impend a few cards like this, and they might do something like this, you know, zero out of one, zero out of two, and then maybe like, you know, two out of three to signal how much energy they have on each of these cards. Okay, click on change, and then that will automatically take care of it for you. And now you can see I have a 0 out of 1 energy, a 0 out of 2 energy, and a 2 out of 3 energy. I find that to be the best way to do it. This way, whenever anyone else is taking a look, they can immediately see what you've got going on and what will be happening in the future. Next, Fractured Days is another spirit who has cards that exist in another zone. But with Fractured Days, it's the days that never were piled. So at the start of the game, you're going to want to either have the one or two player game, which will have a six card days, or the three plus player game, which will give you four cards. So let's just say we're doing like a five player game or something. Click on this and you can see you've got your minors and you've got your majors with the option to gain anything. Additionally, with Fractured Days, you have to keep track of how much time you have. So you can add and remove presents in the normal way here. But there's also some up spots up here at the top of his board. So you can track up to uh, 10 presents, okay? There's nowhere else to uh, click. So 10 presents, you start with three on the board. So realistically, 10 is going to be the highest amount possible, but that's all right here. So you can deselect this and this as well to keep track of both things. Starlight. Starlight has a bunch of different growth options, and after you take a presence off, you have to pick one. So in order to remember which one you picked for the rest of the game, you can also click on these spots here, and you can add or remove little presence icons all over. So, you know, for example, let's say that your first turn, the most common build is to take this presence and then to take this growth option. You could cover up this one, and that way you know that this one is available. Additionally, with Starlight, you're the most common user of permanent elements since you have four of these spots. So when you come down and you select a permanent element, you will see that appears here and that will also always appear here. One last thing with Starlight is that you're the one that causes people to gain six cards. Now the tricky thing is after you gain six cards and then you choose one, all the rest go away. So to get your second card that you're allocated as a part of Boon of Reimagining, you do have to go into the discard pile and then pick from here. Now, if there's a lot of people that are grabbing cards at the same time, you might lose it in the mix. So you have to take a look at the discord and the cards that you can choose from will be printed on the discord. So you can see, okay, uh, these were the choices I had and then choose appropriately. Serpent. Both Locust Serpent and Base Serpent uh, have the same thing, and that is with your Deep Slumber Tracks. And these are just another spot that you can click to add presents. Take note that this is just going to be your color presence. This will not keep track of who you have absorbed. The most common way that this is taken care of is that the host will create a spot on the board for everyone to see that shows all the presents that you have absorbed. Additionally, Locust Serpent is one of those spirits that has a change in their starting hand, so you can see that Aegis is gone and Pull Beneath the Hungry Earth is now in your hand. The last spirit to draw your attention to is Wounded Waters Bleeding. So the special thing with Wounded Waters is that you have the healing cards. So when it comes time to gain a healing card, you can click here on Gain Healing Card. And this will give you the four choices. Once you make your selection, you are unable to change it. So you want to make sure that you pick the right one and you don't accidentally misclick. 
If a mistake is made, you will likely have to get the admins involved who can get into the back end of the Bitcrafter and mess around with things. Of course, the means by which you get these healing cards is to get the healing markers. And that is actually something that is not scripted up here. So once again, similar to Earthquake, you're gonna to wanna to change your player name. So you might do like two animals, one water, right? And that could be the change to your name. That way everyone knows exactly where you're at. When you do pick one of these cards though, let's say that we're pick up Roiling Waters first, you will see it appear right here on your spirit. Then a couple turns later, when you get your healing markers, you can pick up your new innate and it will print right here on your spirit. Once you have a handle on how to interact with the big crafter, you will need to discuss moves with your team and then post up your final turn on the discord. Both the upload and discussion channels are restricted on who can post in them. If you are not playing the game, you will not have permission to type anything. That being said, all of the upload channels are publicly visible, so anyone can observe your game, and you can observe any other game that is happening. The discussion channel is incredibly loose. You can really do whatever you want, but the upload channel should only be used in a structured manner. Let's start with the discussion channel. As you can see here, people are discussing and negotiating the different lines that they could take. The occasional meme will show up and, you know, just keep things nice, loose and lighthearted and fun. For clear communication, there's three things that you should do. First, if you want to ask something of a specific person, you should ping them directly. To do so, you will type at and then you can type their name. So this game, it pops up with all the people that are in the game, which is only the six players, but you then type their name here and uh, continue on. If you see their name appear with the blue highlight, that's how you know it worked. Remember, you may be playing with people from all around the world with different life schedules. Just because you're actively looking at the game doesn't mean they are. And if other people are having a conversation, it's quite likely your message will get lost in the shuffle. By pinging that person directly, it would appear highlighted in yellow for them. So as we can see, I was recently pinged right here and the whole message appears in yellow. And on top of that, it'll also give them a little notification here on the side. That way they won't miss your message. Second, if there's a particular topic that will require a longer, more involved conversation, you should make a thread. So to do this, you take any comment, yours or someone else's, and on the right hand side, we have this button here that says create thread. When we click on that, we can see that that selected message is the top one in the thread. And now any messages we send here will not appear in the main conversation. It's particularly nice when there's multiple threads going simultaneously. Had no one used the thread features, unrelated conversations would be overlapping and everyone would be confused. And your threads could be uh, very meta if you want them to. Once a thread is made, you can see over here on the left side that it exists as like a child channel underneath the main channel. And if we click on that, it comes up right here. If you want to see all the threads that exist in a channel, come all the way to the top and click on this threads button and it will show up right here. If you're not involved in the thread, then this thing on the left hand side will not pop up for you. So you might be completely unaware it's even happening. Therefore, if you're in a thread conversation and want someone's opinion who has not been actively involved up until that point, you should ping them to bring them in. Last, particularly late in the game, when a play involves several players working together, it's important to provide a summary of actions. You could have hundreds of messages going back and forth, teasing out a tricky line, but the whole thing is dependent on another player who might otherwise be uninvolved such as Lightning having to play their Lightning Spoon. Having a summary of necessary actions laid out will prevent anyone from missing their job in the game plan. The discussion channel really is loose and free, but remembering to ping players, create threads, and creating summaries of complex turns will improve the team experience. It might seem a bit excessive at first, but we all have real lives outside of board gaming, and we would hate to miss out on a better play because of poor team communication. While the discussion channel is fairly loose, the upload channel should be much more structured. 
There should not be any actual conversation here. Every message should directly pertain to the moves on the board. The Bitcrafter bot will transcribe actions taken on the website. As we can see here, it has copies of the uploaded images. So we can see the island board and the invader board for that first turn. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see that Downpour gained a card, and these were the cards that they were given the choices for. Then we can see here that they gained Nature's Resilience, and then these are some of their core actions. They gained energy for the turn, they played one card, they paid for it, and they readied up. The only other messages besides the bot and the admin should be the players declaring their turn. So on the screen, you can see two players executing their first turns, and they both have great formatting. To be clear and precise in your communication, it is best to use the Spirit Island emoji icons. In order to type out these icons more quickly, when you're typing a message, the first thing you're going to do is create a colon. Then you can type out the word that is affiliated with that emoji. So for example, if I want to say that I'm playing as Finder or referencing Finder in some way, I type out the word Finder and we can see that the full name of the emoji is Spirit Finder Paths Unseen. Typing out any of those words will guide me to this emoji. Other ones you might use a lot could be Fast for the Fast Phase, Slow for the Slow Phase, and so on and so forth. The Discord admins did a great job of making all the icon names intuitive. Additionally, you want your whole message to come out as one. If you are typing out a message and you want to create the next line without sending the message, hold shift and then press enter. And then you can uh, go from there. In addition to how it's really annoying when someone keeps on sending little message after little message, if anyone else is interacting with the game and maybe the bot puts up a message like this, it's going to break up your turn into several chunks and that's going to be confusing for everybody. So your turn should be laid out as we can see here. Both of these turns have really good formatting. So the first thing you want to do is identify the spirit that you're playing. Then, since we're in the growth and the fast phase, there's no real new information that exists between those two phases, so it's customary to do both simultaneously. We can see he's adding a presence to H6, uh, he's moving the incarnate to C6, and he's gaining four energy. Okay, He has two growth options, as well as the incarnate action, which takes place during the spirit phase. Everything is explicitly laid out here. Then, in the fast phase, we can see he's absorbing Okay, it lays out what the absorb does, and then he's repeating the swallowed that is played by Breath of Darkness, and it explains exactly what it does. And we can see in the same way, everything is clearly laid out here. There's no questions, there's no issues as to what should happen. Take note, for everything that targets a specific land, you use the format of having the board letter followed by the land number. In addition, Having the terrain type afterwards creates one more layer of clear communication. When you're resolving a power, you should be thorough and clear with what the power does. The host should not have to open up the Bitcrafter to see what you meant by some abbreviation or to check what your elemental situation is. Don't make your post some bullshit like DA, A3, and just send it out like that. What is DA? Is it domesticated animals? Devouring ants? Dread apparitions? If it's domesticated animals, do you have the elemental threshold for the beast? What if I don't remember exactly what domesticated animals does? What if you have a modifier that I don't know about? Be good to your game host and lay out the full text of the name of the card and a full explanation of what it does, including any fear produced. The last thing that you want to include in your turn is either an X or a check somewhere in the message. So an X basically says that you are not ready to have this turn finalized, whereas a check means that you are. Sometimes you might be in a situation where you're playing cards without necessarily knowing where they're going to go. That most often happens right before you do your reclaim all and you want to dump your hand. Or you might have several great options for how you could execute your cards and you want to talk to your team about what gets the best value. 
For whatever reason, if you feel like you want to type out your turn so that way other people can see generally what you're doing, but without fully committing to it, you should put the X emoji somewhere in your turn so that way it is clear and obvious you are not ready to go. The host will respect that you are not ready to finalize your turn and they will wait for you to ready up before we proceed forwards. Here we are in the Bitcrafter. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm here playing Finder and I'm going to elect to take this growth to going for the top track. I simply click on my present and it gets removed from this board so we can represent that it'll go somewhere on the island. We can gain all zero energy for the turn. We'll play Paths Tied by, Mat Paths Tied by Nature and a Circuitous and Wending Journey. We can come up here pay zero cost, and then ready up. Now we can see that with these two cards, we have this checked off because we have the correct set of elements. This is our element tracker. So at this moment, we have two suns, one moon, two heirs, one and one, and we have no permanent elements. So now when we jump back to the upload channel, when we scroll down, we'll see all of our actions are right here. So, Securtuous Winning Journey, Pass Tie by Nature, Gain Zero, Paid Zero. Fantastic. Now we need to actually type out our turn. So, while typing out our turn, I want to be able to see the board while I'm working on this. So, we're going to add presence and we're going to choose to grow into g4 and i like to add the tag that it's a wetlands afterwards just to make sure that there's no confusion perhaps i made some kind of a typo right if the land type and the land name and number does not match then the host can be like hey did you make some kind of mistake The name of my left innate power is Lay Paths. And we're going to push that explorer up to E8. I was talking to Windflight and we developed a very fun plan where we're going to be putting all the invaders into E8 loading it up with Dahan, and then having the Dahan kill everything off. So we should be able to start off with a very quick pocket. Both of my power cards are slow, and I have nothing else that I can do. So I can choose to send this off. Now, if we're taking a look at everyone else's actions, we can see that I'm actually going to get abducted by a wooden man this turn. And so I want to make sure that that is also represented here in addition to here. Well, he did say that he's going to be taking my presence from G3. It's important that I also type that here. Okay, great. There's never a problem with having too much information for the host. Uh, it's Remember, the host is just human. They can make mistakes. If you lay absolutely every little detail out, you can guarantee that the host will do the right thing. So I'm pretty confident that this is going to be my final turn, so I'm going to lock it in. So I'm going to click on this edit button here, and this emoji, this X emoji, I'm going to replace with a check. And this says that my turn is ready to go. As you get into the game, there will be more opportunities to declare actions, such as for events and for fear cards. During the invader phase, the host will add a screenshot for every action that happens. So this is after fear, after the ravage, after Scotland 6, and going down from there. It is good to double check the host's work to make sure no mistakes have been made. Handling every action on every board is a lot of work, and mistakes can always happen. 
be sure to let the host know promptly if you catch any mistakes. Some spirits have more complex turns to execute. One of them is downpour. Since they have so many repeats and the ability to gain extra energy, things can get a little bit odd. As we can see here, Piggy clearly lays out how many repeats he has used in these parentheses. Another spirit who has this kind of bookkeeping is shifting memory. While the host may track memory's elemental markers, this double entry bookkeeping makes sure that no mistakes are made. It's possible an error may be caught several turns down the line, and by having everything recorded, you can rebuild the position and resolve any errors. So, with all that said, that just about covers it. PBP is my favorite format recently. I love playing Spirit Island, but I've found I have much less time to do so live these days. On the screen is a recording of me resolving a turn while on my phone. Everything is accessible. All you have to do is download the Discord app. So thank you guys so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.